Spencer it will be the starting guard. Jaden Matthews, the forward. Darren Hickok, our player to watch. Aloma Solovi. And then we also have Emma Torbert on the floor for the Wildcats. Meanwhile, for your pilots, Emmy Shearer getting the start. Haley Andrews and Alex Fowler, both of them were preseason first team all WCC selections. And last season, they were both first team selections in the conference. And then Maddie Moheim, the all time three point scorer for the pilots getting the start. And then the new face, Lucy Cochran, who had a fantastic game against UCSD, is getting to start again. Yeah, she just adds a whole new element inside. I mean, Fowler and her really, really tag off each other. She's a great passer for an inside player. And you know, you like to see Shearer back in the game. She didn't have her best performance the other day, just coming in again off an injury. I'd like to see her get off to a better start. There's a lot of bright spots here for Portland, and after, like I said, a dominating performance against UCSD, you'd like to see them continue that trend into this one, and then take that momentum to Stanford coming up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you want to learn from every single game and get better, and, and that's part of the preseason schedule. This is going to be a, a bigger task for them tonight. The, pr the pressure's going to be a little bit different. The pace is going to be a little bit faster, and like I said, they're going to have to defend in the post, which they did not have to do the other night. Coaching for the Wildcats, it's Valeda Harris in her fourth season leading this squad for Weber State. Michael Meek in his third season now on the bluff and back-to-back -back winning seasons for him. That's something that hasn't happened for the Pilots since 2010-2011. The opening tip up, one by the Pilots is Portland wearing white. Portland in purple across the chest. Weber State in their black uniforms. Weber State in white across the chest. Andrews on the block, gives it to Cochran in the easy finish. Well, and that's one thing that, that Andrews does so well. She posts up inside and then a great high post cut from Cochran and a nice feed. The pressure put on by the Pilots. They need to get it across in a second. And they just did. Torbert off the mark, saved. And now the Pilots have numbers. Andrews and Shearer. To give to Shear, poked away. Great defense by Darren Hickok. Trailing on the defense and breaking up that play. Really close to a 10 second call um, against Weaver State, but they just got it across. Good hustle back. Andrews, deep two. Torbert with the rebound. Salovi. We talked with Valeda Harris earlier this week and she was very high on Aloma, talking about one of the best guards that she has on this team. A good shot of, good job of one and done and just a little bit too low in transition on that pass to Fowler. And Shearer tried to go with the no look pass, deflected and a turnover. Salovi to Torbert. She's got some range and that one's off to the right. Well, you like to see your, your five players stepping out, shooting threes, and you know, Coach Harris told her she has the green light, and I think that's a shot she can make. Shearer trying to pass it to Cochran. Too much traffic in the paint. Torbert trying to go coast to coast, and Andrews rips it away at the last second. Torbert not happy with the no call. Yeah, good hands by Andrews. And again, I mean, you look at what's happening so far in the game, it's, it's pace and just too many turnovers by Portland, and that's been something that's that they've been working on, and you know, there's something, the point of emphasis for the season. Two turnovers now in the first 90 seconds. Penser missing that one. And the deflection goes off of Cochran as Jaden Matthews tips it off of her. So it'll stay with the Wildcats. And Penser really has the ability to score. Valeda really, really talks nice about her. Good all around player and does a lot for them. Couple offensive boards and Jaden Matthews muscles the basket through and we're tied up at two. Well, that's gonna be a, a big factor throughout this game is, I mean, second and third opportunities because of O boards, they've got to crash and do a good job of putting the body on somebody. And now we've got a foul. And that'll be on number 21, Darren Hickok. That'll be her first and the team's first. Yeah, you, you talked about Penser being a high value guard. Coach Harris talked about if she could keep her around for another couple of years, she would, and yeah. she's that valuable. And Cochran, slow spin move in the paint. Yeah, slow but smooth. 
She's very long. Hickok now running up the court against Shearer and the finish of the right hand for the local product. Hickok's real explosive, very athletic, versatile, can do a lot of different things. And we talked with Coach Meek. He said that stopping Hickok was going to be one of the keys. She could pour in a lot of points. Fowler short on that three. And it'll be one and done for the Pilots. The Superman pass broken up by Emmy Shearer. Good hands by Shearer. She's super athletic. And maybe this will kind of get her going, get a few minutes and just get her settled. I think, you know, coming off an injury, just not 100% yet. And just need some game experience. Matthews with it, going up against Maddie Moheim. Solovi, pass here on the quick step. Looks like a zone that the Pilots are running. Broken up by Moheim, the active hands. Andrews up the court, gives it up to Shearer, and blocked by Solovi. And the bunny hook from Andrews. Nice job of staying with that play. I mean, decent take, just got a, a nice play on the block. And Andrews does a great job down low. Pencer dribbled it off of her foot and a turnover for the Wildcats. And, and now. And this is where I think Portland's going to have advantages the depth of being able to come in and out with this pace of play. And when they bring people in off the bench, they're bringing a lot of different weapons. And we got Maisie Burnham who just checked in, our player to watch, Rose Fluke, who now has the ball, and then Liana Kai Tu'u, who is sneaky good, especially down on the block. She's got great footwork. Fowler, tough take, Matthews with the block. Well, you can kind of see they, they're looking to go double team Fowler there down low. Spencer into Torbert, and Kai Tu'u holding tall, but Torbert able to make the basket. Yeah, Torbert. Torbert does a nice job. She's got a nice soft touch, good hands, got size inside, real strong. Transfer from Nevada and Burnham. Tough take, it's fouled. She'll head to the line. You know, and that's one of the points of emphasis from Coach Meek is they have to be able to defend in the post. First person on second team foul on the Wildcats. And right now, who do you think matches up best against Torbert on the Pilots bench or out on the floor right now? Well, I think Fowler could do a nice job. And actually, Kaya too, I mean, she's strong down low. The two of them, I think, you know, I, I would probably put Fowler more in the perimeter right now just so she doesn't get into foul trouble. Burnham sinking the first free throw. 15 points, six rebounds, two assists, a steal, and a block against UC San Diego on Thursday. Former Big Sky freshman of the year. The second free throw rattles out. Emery Lavelle now into the game for the Wildcats. Lavelle lost it momentarily, got it back. 15 on the shot clock. Portland in their matchup. And the foul is going to bail out the Wildcats. That one's on Rose Fluke. That'll be her first and the first one on the Pilots. Well, I mean, two hands on the, on the body is an automatic call, whether you've displaced them or not. That's been a rule change a little bit ago. Got to play defense with your feet. Cochran checks in. Fowler to the bench. Lavelle against Flug. 13 on the shot clock. Andrews against Torbert. Hickok beats Kai Tu'u on the first step. Shot over Cochran, no good. Burnham flies in. And we've got a foul call. Well, and, and that's what Cochran adds right there. I mean, shot blocker. And she alters people's shots. And she's, we saw that the other night. She had, what, I think six blocks? Close to it. Shot right there over Cochran Falls for Matthews. And you can see Weaver State's trying to go inside. Most of their point production is going to be in the paint. They want to make things happen. Portland's got to do a good job of defending. Right now, Weber State working with a one-point lead. We've reached the halfway point in the first quarter. Flug, the open three. That one's long. Cochran chasing it down, throws it off of Hickok. And that'll be 
A foul actually called on Darren Hickok. And that'll be her second personal and the second one on the Wildcats. Tough break for Hickok, but it's a one point lead for Weber State. 4.56 left to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. Welcome back inside the Child Center. One point lead for Weber State. Flug inbounding, gets it out to Kai Tu'u. Going up against Matthews. 15 on the shot clock. And we've got a three second call on the pilots. Kaylee Frawley now in the game for Portland. And Frawley really can do a good job of providing that inside presence defensively. And Penser, too strong on that attempt. Yeah, great job of breaking the press and good look at the rim, just didn't finish it. Kai Tu'u working for position down low, left hand high off the glass, no good. Lavelle brings the ball up. Torbert thought about the three. Pulled it back. Torbert, the hook over Cochran, no good. Offensive rebound, put back for Matthews. Well, and that makes it six out of their 10 points are on second chances. Portland's gotta do a good job of def doing some good job on the boards. All 10 of the points right now for the Wildcats have been in the paint and a foul called on Liana Kai Tu'u. I didn't quite see what happened on that one. Was it a moving screen? Moving screen. Fowler checking in along with Emmy Shear, Flug and Kai Tu'u to the bench. So we'll be back into the game. And Tama Fonodi also in for the Wildcats. Full court pressure by the Pilots. As Weber State just gets it across. And it looks like Emmy Shearer will pick up the foul. That'll be her first personal. And the fourth one on the Pilots. Well, and the thing you want to be careful of with putting all this pressure is getting yourself in foul trouble and putting them at the line. One more foul in the quarter and they're at the line for the rest of the time. We have two free shots on the next foul from Portland. Pass broken up, but then kept alive by Solovy. Nine on the shot clock. Matthews to Solovy. Hesitation in the paint, gave it up. Andrews with the steal, loose ball, and a foul called. And we have a very physical game right now. <laughs> yes, we do. Both Andrews teams. did not like no. that one bit. Gave her the little stare down right there. Yes, she did. 
And four fouls now on Weber State. Matthews picking up her first personal. I mean, both teams very similar in style. Trying to get the feed to Fowler deflected. And now Andrews trying to plead her case to the referee. Fowler saying she didn't touch it either. It'll stay with Weber State. But Coach Meek not happy with the call either. He's trying to yell across the court to see what that referee saw. And it looked like Fowler noticed it almost immediately. And now we've got another body hitting the floor and a foul on Solovy. Well, right now, both teams are kind of baiting each other. A lot of emotion in the, in the building right now. It's getting very physical. And the officials are doing a nice job of just trying to clean it up and, and slow it down a little bit here. Emery Lavelle checks back in. Also on the floor is Vicky Parra for the Wildcats. I mean, that was just a frustration foul. And almost turned into two. It's probably can't hit the short shot. Shearer. Grabs it, ball still loose. Couple of players fighting for it, and they'll call jump ball. Held ball on the alternate possession rule. The ball goes over to Weaver State. A lot of hands. A lot of hands in that ball, that's for sure. Matty Oheim into the lineup. Brawley to the bench, Moheim out. Portland just one of their last seven from the field. They're on a Nearly three minute drought. Pencer with it. Tough defense. And just gets it across before the 10 second call. Fowler steals the pass in a double dribble call. I didn't see it. You know, again, really, really close to a 10 second violation. And then just trying to go a little bit too fast. That's, a, that's what this pace does. It's not necessarily turning the ball over. It just makes you go too quick on the offense. Pilots now have three turnovers in the last three minutes. Jaden Matthews picked up her dribble. Paras pass taken away by Fowler. Give back to Fowler high off the glass. That went off the shot clock it looked like. Yeah, and that's not a typical finish from Fowler by any means. Three turnovers in the last 90 seconds for Weaver State. Matthews, the spin move on Fowler, and got the bounce. And Coach Meek calling a timeout. Great little up and under move. Great footwork and a great finish. And that'll be a 30 second timeout for the Pilots. And now it's a five point lead for Weaver State. Well, we talked about defending in the post, and right now their posts are really taking the two Portland points in the paint. Every single point they have in the game is, is in the paint. Not to mention that six second chance points for Weber State as well. Four offensive boards and 11 to six on the boards between the two. And they're on a 6-0 run over the last 250. Portland's turned the ball over three times in the last three and a half minutes. And, you know, that's been something that Coach Meek has talked about all, all season long so far is just taking care of the basketball. You limit your possessions and your opportunity to score if you're turning the ball over, so. Wildcats trying to start 2-0. Be the first time since 2016-2017. Well, this is the first time she's really had all of her players. You know, again, fourth season in and trying to build a program, create your own culture. Fowler strong take, bouncing around, and it'll be a defensive rebound. Fowler looks like she got hit in the chin. Shearer on defense, Lavelle lost it. And gives it up. And now we've got a foul call. A lot of energy back and forth between these two teams. And again, it's very physical. A lot of hands, a lot of bodies. And we're going to be in the bonus. 
which means an automatic two shots for Emmy Shearer at the line. You know, as an official, really hard game to call because it's so physical in every single spot. Doesn't matter if it's on ball or off ball. I mean, they're trying to make something happen and trap and both sides. And like we said, it's kind of getting a little, little chippy here and there. Shearer from Auckland, New Zealand. 75.5% free throw shooter last season. And with that free throw, she's got her first point on the new year. Aura Taylor with it. Picks up her dribble. Moheim and Flug are there, causing defensive troubles. Torbert in trouble. Moheim and Fowler splits the defenders. In the paint, the right hand almost got it to go. I mean, both teams, as soon as they're catching the ball, they have two and three people, hands all over the place. Let's get past the shearer. Pass their defender, pass broken up. Lavelle taking it against Flug. And that foul will be on Rose Flug, her second personal, and the fifth one on the Pilots. On the Pilots. Well, catch her into the bonus for the rest of the floor. And Lavelle moving slowly to the free throw line as Haley Andrews checks back in. And she fell hard. I mean, it was a great take. Drew the foul and just fell real hard on the ground. Makes the first free throw. It's the first free throw attempt on the season for Lavelle, and she'll go two for two. And the Pilots trailing by six here in the first quarter. Andrews fakes the pass, denied by Penser. Cochran chases down the loose ball, and Weber State ends up with it. Well, right now, everything's forced offensively, trying to create off the dribble instead of creating out of their offense. Lavelle baited Cochran in, tried to give it up to Ava Williams, but Williams missing the short shot. 30 seconds in the quarter. Cochran double teamed, got the ball back and blocked, but called the foul. Well, she had some success really early in the game. You'd like to see her go back to her. I mean, she turned to make that move. She had two people immediately on her. Shearer out, Burnham back in. Lucy Cochran at the line to shoot two. Cochran missing the first free throw. Transfer from Oregon. You know, we were talking with Valeda Harris earlier this week, and her and Coach Meek pretty familiar with each other. She joked around, you know, I'm kind of sick of this Meek guy. <laughs> they faced each other back when uh, Harris was coaching at Lake Oswego High School, and of course Meek was at Southridge. Yeah, she's... Portland native, played at Portland State, had a great career, a lot of history here. But uh, yeah, she's like, every, every, everywhere I've been, I've had a coach against him. And as you can see, the style of play hasn't changed much. He used to do this in the high school level too. Causing problems, 10 seconds left in the quarter. Lavelle gives it up to Penser. Para to Williams, can't convert. Triple team, and Andrews thought she had Poked the ball away. And instead she'll pick up the foul. That'll be her first personal, the sixth one on the Pilots. Well, if Portland wants to have a chance at the end of this game, they've got to make an adjustment and not allow them to get so deep in the paint and they've got to do a better job on the defensive boards. Williams making the free throw. Transfer from Colgate, redshirt junior, originally from San Jose, California. 49% free throw shooter. Missing that one, Kai Tu'u rebounds. And that will end the first quarter. Six point lead for the Wildcats. They lead 15 to nine after one. We'll be right back inside the Child Center on the WCC Network.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Six point lead right now for Weber State. And Jen, you and I were looking at some of the stats during the break. It's been over seven minutes since the Pilots had their last field goal. And that stretch will continue after Parra gets the rebound. Yeah, certainly gonna have a hard time winning basketball games if we're not scoring the basketball. Getting out rebounded 14 to 10 in that quarter. And one thing that I'm worry, worried about is the five inch offensive boards that Weber State has in that quarter. Turnover by Matthews. They have numbers. Gives it up to Kai Tu'u in the paint. Andrews getting the assist on that last play. Now Laura Taylor picks up her dribble, almost traveled there. Moheim on defense. Burnham comes up from behind. They get a turnover. Ball still loose. Moheim looking for it. Para dives for it, and it'll be pilot basketball. And Weaver State just kind of fell right into what Portland's trying to create. As they got across the time timeline, no problem. And then just going too quick on the penetration. I'd like to see you get across half court, just settle it and get a great shot in the half court. Both teams, really. Portland went to Weber State two seasons ago and came away with a victory. It's a foul called on number 10, Emery Lavelle. Weber State foul on number 10, Emery Lovell. First personal, first team foul on Wildcats in the second quarter. Inbound, tipped. Moheim stays with it. Baseline jumper, no good. Saved by Hickok. Lavelle between the defenders. Matthews having trouble. Kai Tutu rips it away, and we've got a jump ball. And again, just trying to go a little too fast. I mean, resulted in a jump ball and they get it back, but very easily could have been another turnover. Salovi and Torbert checking in for Weber State. Moheim is fighting with Hickok on the block. And Moheim will pick up that foul, her first. And the first one on the pilots in this quarter. Taylor, step back three. That was short, never hit iron. Fowler streaking, gives it up to Moheim, lets the defender go by. Can't connect. Offensive rebound, Kai Tu'u. Skip pass to Moheim. Andrews cutting towards the basket. She'll draw the foul. Laura Taylor will pick up her first personal and the first one on the Wildcats this quarter. Second or second, team, uh, excuse me. Well, just a great cut Corey from the top by Andrews. Feller, how many times we see that combination? We'll see that all year long. We'll see if the Pilots can actually convert this time on the inbound. They've been close a couple of times. Fowler on Torbert and a travel call. Yeah, she kind of got that, that crab drill kind of caught on her hip. She has not had an easy look at the rim all night long. Penser gets the inbound. So Lovi went backwards to go forwards. And they're gonna call that one on Maddie Moheim. I don't know about that one. It looked like Solovi pushed her off there. Yeah, Solovi kind of extended her arm to get her off of her. I mean, there was body contact in the beginning, but I mean, there's been contact in every possession so far. And some of the fans not happy about it. You can hear them as Lucy Cochran will now check in. Kai Tu'u and Moheim to the bench. Shearer out. Solovi, the Penser. Matthews just got it outside the paint. Ball still loose. Torbert trying to save it, balls hit back up in the air and it'll stay with Weaver State. 
Well, and Portland's just got to do a better job, especially on the weak side, of putting a body on somebody. Once that shot goes up, they need to pursue it and go get it. Salovi inbounds to Hickok. 15 on the shot clock. Here going up against Salovi. And Torbert got fouled and one. She'll head to the line. Nice penetration, and that's set up by that penetration to the middle. Bottom person slides over, and the backside guard isn't dropping. And she's just so strong, there's not too many of those that she's going to miss. Fowler picked up her first foul. Her, be the third one on the Pilots. Colbert making the free throw. Near She's got a nice sweet touch. I was going to say, 77% free throw shooter. Spin move by Andrews. No. And Fowler's there to clean it up. Good follow by Fowler. That's kind of a misdirection, trying to get her to the rim. Andrews, that is. Salovi, hesitation, now brings it down. Baseline pass, blocked by Cochran. Shearer up the floor, no good. Burnham follows it up, but a foul called first. Now it'll be on Corey Penser. Well, and Shearer felt her coming from behind, absolutely. She's got to gather enough to get up to the rim on that instead of through the basket, and got, got lucky and got the foul call. But great heads up play by getting that thing out in transition. Sure has a chance to get this game back within three for Portland. The New Zealander last season averaged seven points, two rebounds, and 1.4 assists, 1.5 steals per game. And really came into her own in the last quarter of the season. Well, super athletic, a lot of upside. Coach Meek really likes what she can bring to the table, that's for sure. Fowler coming over to trap. Cochran's beat. Salovi to Torbert. Missing, Shearer grabs the rebound. Pushing it up to Andrews. Foul off ball. Okay, Salovi picked up that foul. That's her third personal foul. And that's a big deal. We still have more than half the quarter to go until halftime. Well, and just a, a silly foul off the ball like that. She's trying to fend off a bigger opponent. Fowler connecting on the inbound. And they just have such a good feel between the two of them. Fowler almost broke up that play. Weber State. Going to reset. Matthews over Cochran. Corbett poked it up, kept it alive, and offensive rebound. Again, just second opportunities. Seven offensive rebounds now for Weber State. Torbert trying to get position, and she traveled. Well, and Cochran caused that right there just with her size and shot block ability. You know, you got a 6'5 kid alternating, altering your shot. She didn't really agree with that call, though. Shear gives it up to Penser. Hand off to Kai Tu'u. Switch by the defense. Andrews going up against Matthews. Gets the screen from Cochran. And now she's got the matchup she wants. Five seconds on the shot clock going up against Torbert. And Torbert threw her body in front. That'll be a blocking foul. And, that, and that's Haley Andrus to a T right there. Smart, she knows she has the mismatch and just goes right at her, draws a foul. Pilots only trailing by one. 18 to 17, they're currently on a 6-0 run over the last minute 45 as Shearer checks out of the game, Burnham back in. And Keely Frawley checked in a couple of moments ago as well. And five fouls on Weaver State, and that could be huge heading into halftime. Next foul after that will be an automatic two shots. 
As this one's two shots for Andrews, she'll miss the first one. 73.3% free throw shooter. And she runs this offense to a T, 16.2 points last season, led the conference in scoring during conference play. Really worked in the offseason to develop her three a little bit. And that pass to go out of bounds. And right now you got Weber State and Laura Taylor just telling her teammates to calm down right now as that lead has now dwindled away. We've got ourselves a tie ball game after a 7-0 run by Portland and no points scored in the last two minutes and 15 seconds for Weber State. Kai Tu'u faked the shot, gets into the paint and the touch, no good. Cochran has the rebound, double teamed. Andrews going up against Taylor. Hard body, hard take, and count it! And right now, it's the Haley Andrews show. She's kind of taken over, and that's exactly what Portland means in a leader. And that'll lead us to our media break. Andrews hitting the basket, giving the Pilots a two-point lead. She'll head to the free throw line when we come back. 4.54 until halftime on the WCC Network. Welcome back inside the Child Center. Just under five minutes to go until halftime and the Pilots have gotten a little bit of life here just before that last break. And you and I, Jen, we're talking about the points in the paint and how Weber State has just been dominating that aspect. But the Pilots slowly gotten back into that category. They've tied it up 14 points apiece and in the paint. And they're on a 9-0 run in the last two and a half minutes, which is a huge key. But you know, both teams right now are really struggling to shoot from the field. 30%. Turnovers have been the, the key for both teams. And then rebounds. The Weber State's got 11 turnovers. Portland only has seven. And Andrew sinking the free throw. She's now three of four from the free throw line. Beautiful pass underneath. Nice little wrap around. Johnson. And Akiwa Johnson. Great pass from Lavelle. Kai Tu'u near the elbow. Cochran trying to get position in the paint right now. She's going to have to move, and she got called for a three second violation. That, you know, that's a hard thing. She had position. The guard's got to give it to her sooner so that she has a chance to do something. And a foul called. It might be on number 10, and it will be Emery Lavelle. That'll be her second personal foul. Maisie Burnham and Keely Frawley to the bench. Shearer and Moheim now on the floor. One point lead for Portland, 4.29 left to go until halftime. Cochran the handoff to Andrews, kicks it out to Shearer, corner three. 
The New Zealander connects. Well, she's starting to get a little bit more flow into her game. A little confidence. Six points now for Shearer. Parra's got nobody on her. I don't think she realized she had that much space. No, I think she was surprised. And that pass might have been a bit late, but Kai Tu does a good job of bringing it back in. Shot from Cochran, no good. And that's a good call. She came over the back trying to make something happen, but great job on the tip on that pass, trying to keep it alive. Kai Tu'u picked up that foul. Portland on a 13 to two run over the last three and a half minutes. A lead by four. Paro with it. Gives it up to Pincer. Matthews going up against Fowler, double teamed by Andrews. Lavelle going up against Sure. 10 on the shot clock, gives it up to Matthews, to Johnson. Quick pass to Parra and she can't handle it. Well, and Weaver's doing a nice job again of, of breaking the, the press and getting it over half court. Just their mistakes are trying to kind of thread the needle and do too much. Kelsey Lindsay checking into the game, getting her first action. Lindsay, a third year guard out of Seattle. Shearer has it, going up against Johnson Cochran. Backdoor cut and finish. Great back screen by Andrews and a great, great catch and finish. Seven points for the Aussie. Johnson got the pass up the court. Para back to Johnson going baseline blocked by Cochran. She's falling out of bounds. She has to throw it back inbounds and it's a turnover. She's got great timing. Another block. And Fowler is called for the foul. That'll be her second personal. And the 15th foul on Portland. So two free throws for Weber State. Well, and Cochran just adds this new element, you know, that, that Portland hasn't had in the past in this shot blocking opportunities. And she just has great timing. You think she's out of the play, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes and makes a block. She just tied her career high in blocks. She had three against Utah State back in the 2019-2020 season when she was at Oregon. And that's an aspect of the game that the Pilots never really had the last couple of seasons, and that could play huge dividends down the road. Especially in conference. You know, we're really early into this season, and once she gets used to the system and Playing with everybody else on the team. Here's a turnaround jumper halfway down and it pops out. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, that's a great little look. I mean, she's got seven points and seven rebounds so far. Just solid, I mean, makes a lot happen in a short period of time. Lestane gives it up to Matthews, gives it up to Hickok going baseline. Torbert has it, created some space too strong and it'll go out of bounds. And Weber State's doing a good job at least getting the ball down there on the block. They just haven't had those shots fall yet. Yeah, I mean, I think their whole point of emphasis is go inside. Only, just, only taking four three-point attempts in the whole game. Just under two minutes left to go. Cochran misses the mid-range jumper, and Hickok rips it away from Shearer. And Lassane now with the top of the key. Pencer. Back to Lassane. Torbert. Pencer. Went baseline. Gives it up. Goes to Torbert in the corner. Four on the shot clock. She's going to have to put it up. And that one's long. No good. Shot clock violation. Good defense by the Pilots. Good team defense. Fowler to the bench, Kai Tu'u back on the floor. 
And Maisie Burnham also back in. Haley Andrews will get a breather just before half. Right now, Weber State, one of their last nine from the field. And no field goals in almost three and a half minutes. Cochran near the elbow, gives it up to Kai Tutu. She's left alone. She can hit that three, almost banked it in. And I just think that shot's too quick, especially for the time and score right now. Good possessions right at the end of the half. Lassane lost it. Lindsay with it, pushes it up to Shearer. And transition buckets for the Pilots. When you, for Weaver, that's not what you want. I mean, that's exactly playing right into the hands of, of what they're trying to do is create turnovers in the full court and off you go. Burnham will get called for the foul, her second personal, but that'll give two free throws to Kaya Lassane. Freshman from Antelope, California. Molheim checking back in. Lassane was a 49% free throw shooter in high school. Average 9.9 .9 points, 8.2 rebounds, and 4.3 steals. Missing the first free throw. And unable to end the scoring drought of more than two minutes and 15 seconds. On ball pressure from Lassane on Kelsey Lindsay and a foul called. And Coach Harris not happy with what she saw right there, covering her eyes. Well, just really kind of a silly foul. You know, touch foul. She's at the 10 foot line of the volleyball line. I mean, just play position defense, push her to a side. You know, instead you're giving up two free throws. Kelsey Lindsay at the line to shoot. Torbert back on the floor along with Solovy for Weber State. Kelsey Lindsay's first free throw attempt, no good. And she hasn't missed a free throw since last season. Correction from two years ago, because she was perfect from the line last season. And that looked aggressive from Frawley on the inbound. And that'll just lead to two free throws on the other end. And again, just, you know, a silly foul, 90 feet from the basket. I mean, I like the aggressiveness in trying to make something happen, but you just don't want to pick up a foul like that. That's Frawley's first and the seventh on the Pilots. Para checks back in, and so does Haley Andrews for the Pilots. Pencer senior from Melba. Idaho shoots nearly 92% from the free throw line. And Coach Harris again, she wishes she could keep this player for, for multiple seasons, especially since she's still growing this program. Just a highly thought of player. Yeah, she loves her leadership. Versatile, can do a lot of things for them. And you'd like to just see the one shot here going into half, no matter what, you're up six. Possibly more with a good attempt here at the end, but just smart basketball and use the clock. Yeah, no shot clock here. Pilots will have the last shot if they want it. Under 10. The spin to Lindsay. The wing three, no good. And a rebound for Para. Lassane doesn't have enough time to put it up. And that will end the first half. 29-23, the Pilots lead Weber State. And Jen, your thoughts on the first half between these two teams? Well, it was a little sloppy here and there, but I thought Portland did a nice job in the last six or seven minutes of really kind of settling down, caused some turnovers, got some transition buckets. Neither team's shooting very well, but it's gonna have to be a defensive effort and boards in the second half. That's Jennifer Mountain, I'm Brian Slyke. We're heading away for halftime. We'll be back with about 90 seconds before the second half tips off. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. This time I'd like to thank the following generous partners for their support.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Just under two minutes left in halftime. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. The Pilots were trailing at the end of the first quarter by six points, turned it around, got a 12 point advantage in the second quarter and they went into half with a six point lead. But let's talk about some of the stats that we thought stood out to us. First things first, the turnovers for Portland, 13 to eight to Weber State. And that's something you know Coach Meek really wants to limit. Absolutely. I mean, he's been talking about it all season. It's going to be a point of emphasis for them. 13 and a half is just going to be too many. Just again, takes away opportunities for you to score. I mean, some of the other places we were looking at, the offensive boards for Weber State. They had eight of their 23 rebounds came on the offensive side. Mainly Jaden Matthews, who had five of them, was the big difference. Yeah, Portland's going to have to make an adjustment at half. She's got 10 points five offensive boards, and she's actually made a lot of things happen just by getting her hands on the ball. They've got to put a body on her, not just jump with her, be strong. And one of the other positive things that we saw for Portland is they were trailing in the paint category early on, and they started to work it back inside, and they take a two-point advantage into halftime. Yeah, I mean, both teams, I mean, 18 points for Portland and 16 points for Weaver State in the paint. That's where they're both having success. I mean, they're struggling from the perimeter, and quite frankly, I mean, Portland only took three three-point shots on the half, and that's not something typical that we see from this Portland team. Meanwhile, for Weber State, one of the players that's going to have to really keep an eye on herself is Sola V. She picked up three first-half fouls, and she's probably the best guard that the Wildcats have. I know Coach Harris speaks so highly of her, and she's going to need to stay out of trouble this half. Yeah, and I mean, when she was in the ball game, they did a much better job of transitioning from full court into their half-court sets half-court offense, and if you're Portland, right now you're going right at her to see if you can pick up that quick one and get her off the floor. Yeah, she just had the quick first step and seemed to beat any defender that was put on her in the first half. And so we'll be, we'll start the second half along with Torbert, Matthews, Hickok, and Penser. For the Pilots, it'll be Andrews, Shearer, Moheim, Fowler, and Cochran starting on the floor. And I thought Shear did a nice job of kind of getting herself involved in the offense. And again, she kind of sat out for a few games due to an injury and you like to see her get involved. She had a team high eight points going into halftime. Cochran showing off the passing skills to Andrews in the paint. And that's all set up by Andrews screening somebody. They have to switch or you know trail behind and try to get over for that free throw line jumper. And she just turns and seals and great job of finding her. Horvath, 0 for 2 from 3, brings it back inside and a blocking call called on Alex Fowler. She's looking at the referee and disagreeing with that one. Well, she's standing in the, the restricted circle, which is going to be an automatic block. She's got to step out, meet her a little bit earlier. And if I'm, if I'm Portland right now, I'm not flying out at that three-point shot by any means. I'd back off and make her hit it first. That's Fowler's third personal foul. Torbert, one for one from the free throw line this afternoon. First free throw is good. Torbert going for the second free throw. 77% free throw shooter goes two for two. Fowler checks out, Kai Tuu in. Well, if you're Portland, that's something you don't want to see as your best player walking off the floor with three fouls so early in the half. She had four points at halftime. Moheim brings the ball up. Cochran with it. And Torbert takes it away. Picks up her dribble. She's in trouble. Two defenders, Andrews and Shearer. Meek wanted a call. Yeah, I think they kind of let that travel go because there might have been a foul. Corbett trying to get positioning inside. Travel called. And Voida Harris immediately in the ear of the referee. You know, I agree with her on this, quite frankly. She's pivoting, not picking up her foot. It's just another up and under. I mean, that's a good move. The Pilots take over still, leading by six. Moheim, no points so far in tonight's contest. Yeah. 
Moheim will come out. Gets it to Cochran, going up against Torbert. Picks up her dribble, the feed to Kai Tuu. Dangerous pass, you're lucky that Matthews had her back to the ball. Both teams have really kind of tried to thread the needle through the paint multiple times, and every single time it's ended up either going out of bounds or turning it over. The inbound, all the way out to Andrews, going up against Hickok. And the bunny hook off the spin. Goes for Andrews. She's just so strong when she gets into the paint. Very successful, does not miss too many opportunities. She now has a team high 10 points. So will V. Tough take, Cochran. Standing her ground, gets the rebound. Man, you like to see that. She was strong with the ball. Pilots push it all the way to the corner to Shearer. She gets all iron. Wildcats down the court. And Shearer poked it away. She'll be called for the foul. Meek not happy with that call. He just got a And team. he got a technical. Meek thought Shearer got all ball when she poked it away from Torbert, and now he picks up a technical foul. Well, you know, and he's not a guy that loses his cool too often. Almost not happy never. With that. Yeah, not happy with that. Foul on the Portland bench. Third team foul. So Penser will go and shoot the free throw after right, the technical. And Meek really not happy. Weaver State. So Weaver State will take the ball after the technical and the free throws. Hickok inbounding. And with how close this game is, keep an eye on those free throws. So will be inside. Passes it out to Torbert. She's looking for some help. Double teamed momentarily. Spins inside the paint. Offensive board and in for Matthews. She's got 12 points and eight rebounds. You know, and that's the thing is, in the first attempt is not what killing them. It's the, the second opportunities off the O boards. And again, Matthews right there just cleaning up. Hickok will pick up that foul. That's her third personal. First team foul for Weaver State in the quarter. Or Taylor checking in. And Hickoff will head to the bench. Matthews very close to a double-double. 12 points, eight rebounds. She's done a nice job for Weaver State. Kai Tu'u got the inbound. Good hands again. Falling out of bounds. Gets it to Andrews, Cochran in the paint between two defenders, finds Kai Tu'u baseline short on the shot. And Jen, just a couple moments ago, you brought up the second chance points. Weber State, 14 second chance points tonight. Yeah, I mean, Portland's doing a nice job of defending in the first attempt. It's just they're getting second opportunities left and right because of O boards. And that's almost half of their points coming on second chance. Nice. Shearer found a spot behind the defense in the dart from Andrews. Great job of Andrews of just seeing the floor running in transition. It's just so good. It's her fifth assist. And Matthews, the mid-range jumper. She's come to play. Matthews done a nice job mid-range, scoring down low. A lot of it off those O boards like we've been talking about all night. Ooh. And they called it on zero, Wara Taylor, and that could have been terrible for Weber State had it been called on Solovy. Torbert will head to the bench. Para back out on the court for Weber State. Maisie Burnham checking it in for Portland. Yeah, I thought it was on honor to pick up her fourth. Andrews double teamed. Finds Kai Tu'u in the paint. Got behind Penser. Andrews just again, court vision, being able to see. 
Parra tracked that one down. Taylor slows down the offense. So will be, now has it. Parra near the elbow, almost had it taken away by Andrews. Finds Pencer. Goes into the body of Burnham. Off the glass, no good. The pilot wheel from Boheim. She hit it against UC San Diego just the other night. She sure did. Without a hesitation. Andrews in trouble. Out to Moheim. The second shot. No good. Burnham came flying in there to try to get the rebound. Now Moheim has it. Gives it back to Burnham. She was trailing everything Ooh. and she gets fouled hard. Ooh. Para will get called for the foul. She's also hurt herself a bit it seemed like. Burnham seems to be okay. But a tough fall for both players on that last play. Yeah. It's been a real physical game, back and forth, both sides. Para picked up her first. That's the third one on the Wildcats in the quarter. And a timeout will be called, and that'll bring us to our first media break of the third quarter, 37-31. Pilots leading by six. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. Welcome back inside the Child Center. We had an intentional foul called on Weber State, so Maisie Burnham is at the free throw line. She makes the second free throw, and then she should have. And they get the ball back. Oh, they get here. the ball back. Yep. yep. It was upgraded to a flagrant. 
So Rose Fluke checking back in for Portland. She'll inbound. Thirty-eight, thirty-one. Islets leading here in the third quarter. Backdoor cut by Andrews. Cut off, and Kai Tuu tried to get the putback to go. Nice little backdoor there by Andrews. Just missed it. And Ava Williams did a good job of cutting her off in the paint. Yep. So will be with it. Over to Johnson, back to Solvi. Inside to Torbert. Solvi past Andrews, the floater, no good. Torbert, offensive rebound. Travel called, and Torbert frustrated with it. And that'll send us to immediate break, 427. Left to go in the third quarter, 38-31. Pilots leading inside the Child Center on the WCC Network. We welcome you back inside the Child Center. 427 left to go in the third quarter. It's a seven point lead for Portland over Weber State. Coach Harris asking the defense to switch before the inbound. And the Wildcats back off on pressure. Kai Tu'u. Near the elbow, tried to give it up to Cochran, denied by Torbert. Burnham drives, and a foul called. That one's gonna be on Nikila Johnson. Man, it seems like every time Macy touched the ball, she's either you know getting hit with the foul or a lot of contact. Burnham only has two points. He's two for four from the free throw line. Andrews pass, Penser underneath. Can't get the bounce. Good move, just didn't finish. Poked away by Kai Tu'u. It'll stay with Weber State. Shearer and Frawley checking in. Flug and Burnham checking out. And Macy Burnham. Johnson setting the screen. So will be with it. Torbert sets the screen. So will be fell to the ground. And the high school teammates fighting over the loose ball. Kai Tu'u comes away with it. Andrews, the three from dead ahead. Back iron. I like to see her take that shot. I mean, that's one of the things we talked about. It's just expanding her game. She's worked on a three-point shot over the year, over the summer. Pass inside, well over Torbert's head, and the Pilots will just let it go out of bounds and take over. And that's going to be their 19th turnover for the game. 
They have four turnovers in the last three and a half minutes. Both teams on a scoring drop. The Pilots at about 215. Weaver State at about 345. 15 on the shot clock. Corner to Shearer. Gets it to Cochran on the low block. Pass Torbert. And strong off the glass. Johnson rebound. Again, another good move to the rim, just not finishing. Torbert's three no good. And it'll be one and done for Weaver State. But the strides that Cochran had, she got around her defender with ease. And you'd like to see more of that. Shearer long. Rebound Cochran. And short on that attempt. She now has 11 rebounds, 7 points. Good offensive board. Just didn't get enough gather and finish there. Johnson. Shearer poked it away. She's got Andrews streaking. Feeds it to her underneath and good. Great job by Emmy Shearer making that play happen. Just real handsy. Athletic and then in transition finding Andrews. Pressure by the Pilots in the half court. So will be in trouble. She's got to get it across the timeline. That's 10 seconds. And so will be frustrated, out of breath, tired after the defense put on by the Pilots forces the turnover. And this is where the depth of Portland really can wear you down. I mean, they've got people coming in and out the whole time and fresh legs and Solovey right there, man. You saw it. She's breathing really hard, trying to get the ball over half court. And it'll be a 30-second timeout called by... And it'll turn into a full media, so we'll head to break. Nine-point lead for the Pilots. A buck 45 left to go in the third quarter. It's 40-31 to 31 on the WCC Network. Welcome back inside the Child Center. Portland leading 40 to 31 over Weaver State. Brian Slyke and Jennifer Mountain with your call. And Jen, it's been sort of a wild third quarter between these two teams. What stu uh, stood out to you? Well, they're picking up their intensity level defensively. Portland's got 11 steals, 11 points off fast break, 28 points in the paint, and 18 points off Weaver's turnovers. And we got a charge call on Maisie Burnham. And now the referee is going to talk about it. Was the defender in the circle? And a blocking call. So Burnham will not pick up the foul. Instead, it'll be on Weber State. Now Burnham wasn't in the process of shooting, but it is the fifth foul on Weber State, so Burnham will get two free throws. I mean, that's just a good job of collaborating by the officials right there. In the circle, and that's an automatic block. That rule changed, I think, two years ago now. Maybe three. Well, Coach Harris 
trying to get an explanation. She's just out of frame right now. And there's two referees over there. And so Maisie Burnham at the free throw line, two for four tonight. Those are her two only points. Steal and a rebound. Makes the free throw. Well, I mean, just a hard fought game on both sides. Very physical, like we've talked about. I was gonna ask you, what, what's been the main difference between this game and UCSD? Is it mainly just the physicality between these two and causing difficulties? Oh, for sure. The athleticism and physicality from Weber, big difference. And the 10 second call, back to back turnovers. My Weber State, the pilot defense suffocating. And that's now seven turnovers in the last five and a half minutes for Weber State. Meanwhile, they haven't scored any points during that time as well. Yeah, and right now they're just kind of losing their poise a little bit, Weber State. You know, a lot of a lot of things aren't going their way right now. They just need to settle. I mean, still, in, it's a, you know, a close game. There's a lot of time left. Pilots are on a 7-0 run over the last five minutes. Ball poked away. I think she just lost that on the sweep. Flug rips the rebound away from Matthews. Flug in trouble, picked up her dribble on her side of the court. Matthews has a game high 14 points. Flug lost it. Turnover, Williams has it. She's up the court, gives it up to Taylor. And she never got a clean handle on it. Well, no teams right now just ball handling. Trying to do a little bit too much. Need to look to advance the ball with the pass. Get some movement. 24 turnovers for Weber State, 13 for Portland. Flug at the point. Crowley with it. Gives it to Shearer who is fighting for position. And a foul called in the paint. That'll go on Lavelle. Smart, That'll be her third personal. Smart heads up play by Shearer. Great, you know, she had a height advantage obviously and she just got her stuck on her back and great job of drawing the foul. And you see that from Portland day in and day out. Every game I've seen so far, they are always looking to post up their guards. It just seems like their guards have the size. We know Andrews has the body too, because we've just seen her do it for the last three seasons. So productive down on the low block. And Shearer with the height as well, and that's what set up that positioning for her. Kai Tu'u checking in, Burnham to the bench. And you're right, it doesn't matter who's out on the floor. Everybody's getting a chance down at the low block. For sure. Foul called on Rose Flug. And again, that's one of those fouls right there. Two hands in the back. Easy call for the official. And, you know, 65 feet from the, the basket. Those are the fouls that you just don't want to pick up. Pilots on a 9-0 run. Weaver State 0 for the last four from the floor. Eight turnovers in six minutes. Lavelle's pass broken up. Laura Taylor kept it outside. 10 seconds left on the clock to end the third quarter. To Torbert. Lavelle puts up the high arcing three. Flug hits the deck. Torbert has it. Turn around. Jumper. Ooh. In and out. And now Kai Tu'u and Matthews having a few words with each other. Burnham steps in the middle. And Matthews. Looks like she had some fighting words for Liana Kai too after the, the two hit the deck as the buzzer goes off. Pilot fans appreciating that effort. And now the referees are telling each other, the, each team to go opposite ways. Again, super physical game. 
And I don't, I, I couldn't see, I was kind of blocked out. I don't know who, who initiated what there, but both of them hit the deck pretty hard, but there were some words exchanged for sure. Well, this, this is where the officials really have to gain control of the basketball game. And it, this is a hard game to call. It really is. I mean, there's just so much contact. You can't call everything, but there's just so much contact off the ball. And right now the referees, you see them in your frame talking about that last play and what they should do. There has already been a flagrant foul called in this game. I, I would not be surprised that if there's a double technical called here, which will just, you know, cross each other out basically. Well, it's the quarter break. We'll be right back in the WCC Network. A 13 point lead for the Pilots. We'll give you a full explanation when we return.
Welcome back inside the Child Center. Weber State will start with the basketball to start the fourth quarter, and we got an explanation on what happened at the end of the third quarter between Liana Kai Tu'u and Jaden Matthews. The two players got locked up in the paint and then took each other down to the ground. Both of them received flagrant fouls, so they both pick up a personal foul, and Weber State ended up with the basketball. Yeah, they basically just cancel each other out, and off we go, just like we would to start the quarter. So Kai Tu'u and Matthews both now have three personal fouls. That was close to five seconds. Torbert underneath, what a move! Great job of just understanding where she was because she got caught underneath that basket. Good finish. Shearer and Andrews tied for the team lead with 12 points each right now. Kai Tu'u with it. Fowler in the paint, fighting for position. She gets the feed, double team. And they called a three second violation on Fowler. I think Fowler should have just grabbed that and went straight to the rim with it. Had position, had a chance, you know, two footer. Sometimes you can take or make too many passes. And Frawley picks up a foul. And Coach Meek is not happy with that. That's, again, one of those fouls that's just silly. And right off the bat, you pick one up in the first 45 seconds. Hickok will inbound it. A quiet night, only two points and five rebounds. And the product from Grant High School here in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, she scored early in the game and then just hasn't been a factor. Pass broken up, turnover, Pilots have numbers. They'll slow it down. And Torbert down on the ground, slow getting up on her side of the court. Ava Williams will check in for, Tor uh, for Torbert. Ava Williams in the lineup replacing Emma Torbert. Yeah, it looks Adding like she hit her knee. The, for the Pilots replacing Keely Frawley. So Shearer will inbound it. 9.01 left in the game. And you hate to see that. She's a good, strong player. She is, and she looks frustrated. Yep. Kai Tu, 15 on the shot clock. Good job by Matthews of not allowing that back door. They left Kai Tu open on the near three, and she hits it. Well, it's only again. the second three-pointer for the Pilots tonight. And again, when your post player can step out and extend the defense and hit that three, you're in great shape. Not having Torbert on the floor right now, it hurts Weber State. She's got 10 rebounds. Hickok trying to fill in for the missed production, gets the rebound, jump ball called, it'll go with Portland. Over to the Pilots. Good job by Mulheim getting in there on that offensive board, just tying her up. And then they get the alternating possession. Fowler will take it near the elbow. Andrews, double teamed now near the corner. Pass tipped to Kai Tu'u, back to Andrews. Fowler has it. Up against Williams underneath in the paint. Missed the shot. Kai Tu with the offensive board. Kai Tu has come in and gives some great energy here. Seven points and four rebounds. Andrews picked up her dribble. Beauty of a hook shot high off the glass. A little jump hook from your point guard. Pass up to Hickok. Kai Tu tried to cut her off. And Hickok now with four points. Fourteen point lead. Molheim's been quiet. No points. Back to Kai Tu'u. Skip pass over to Andrews. Goes baseline underneath. And a foul will be called almost. Had the reverse layup, and the foul called on Corey Penser. 
Well, I think Portland's been real smart in this quarter. They're using a little bit of clock every single time down, executing, getting the ball in multiple people's hands, trying to penetrate and kick, and having some success with it. And it's nice to see Torbert back on the floor for Weber State after taking a spill on the other side of the court. Yeah, especially when she was grabbing her knee a little bit right there. You just hate to see that. Andrews around Torbert, kicks it out to Fowler. Out to Moheim. The triple! The all-time three-point scorer for Portland cashes in with another one. And again, inside out. When you got a shooter like that on the perimeter, you got to find her, and that's a great look. Weber State, a 32-35. And a timeout called by Weber State extended to a full media break. 6.43 left to go in the ball game. The Pilots extending their lead. They lead 52-35. We'll be right back on the WCC Network. Welcome back inside the Child Center. Brian Slight, Jennifer Mountain with your call. It's a 52-35 lead for Portland over Weber State. And the Pilots have been playing more like themselves over the last few minutes. Yeah, definitely have a little bit more rhythm. Caused a lot of turnovers. Haley Andrews called for the foul. That's only her second personal. And the second team foul in the quarter. Andrews has had a terrific game, 14 points, seven assists, and five rebounds. And Shearer picks the pocket, there's a steal. Moheim to Fowler, gather and finish. And that's all Emmy Shearer right there, making that happen in the full court. That's Shearer's third steal. Well, Coach Meek talked about how athletic she is, and that's just a great example of it. Substitution for Weaver State. Emily Lavelle. Lavelle into the lineup. So will the. It goes to the bench. Andrews almost got a steal on the inbound. Matthews inbounding. And Shearer picks it off. Looking like a corner, just baiting that pass. Great job of anticipating. And Moheim steals it away from Lavelle. And Lavelle's really struggled against the pressure. I mean, you just can't go behind your back in full court like that with people coming from behind. That's her third turnover in the game. And Darren Hickok, hands up in the air. She's confused on what she just got called a foul on for. Laura Taylor will check into the game. And Hickok heads to the bench. Hickok now has four personal fouls.
And the turnover bug just continues to get Weber State. They've got 28 turnovers to just 14 for Portland. Well, I think Coach Meek's going to be happy with that number. And Cochran, the finish with the left hand over Torbert. She now has nine points, 11 rebounds. Not to mention she's tied her career high in blocks tonight with three. Ooh. Fowler got hit hard, stumbled. And Cochran unable to deny Torbert. Torbert now has 11 points, 10 rebounds. She's got herself a double-double. I like Torbert. She's strong inside and very physical, can finish. I mean, she can shoot the three we saw in the first half. Oh. Andrews probably a bit frustrated with herself missing that easy shot. Yeah, I was just going to say a little bit of a frustration foul. But a nice play by Fowler. It quickly gave it to her, then saw that Andrews cutting towards the basket. Placed the ball in a great spot. Kelsey Lindsay's going to come in for Andrews. Kelsey Lindsay, you line up three points in Andrews. Lindsay now into the game, and Maisie Burnham also going to check in. And Emmy Shearer will get a break. Emmy Shearer. Well, like I said, every time Burnham's been in the game, something physical has happened. And there she breaks up the pass to Penser. And that's twice now Matthew's pass has been deflected on the inbound to Penser. And twice now she's come up to her and asked her to place it in a different spot. Burnham and Moheim almost trap on the double team. Torbert got Cochran to fly by and empty on two shots. Moheim chasing the ball down, falling out of bounds, gets it to Maisie Burnham. Good heads up pass right there. Ooh, nice. The give and go. Can't convert, ball still loose on the sideline. Burnham is Good trapped timeout. and she'll call timeout. Good timeout by Coach Meek right there. She was stuck in traffic. And that'll be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. And actually that all started by Maddie Molheim. Gets a heads up play, falling out of bounds, trying to save it. Throws it to the other end to a teammate and off they go. Right now it's a 19 point lead for Portland. And the truth be told, this game doesn't feel like it's a 19 point lead for Portland because of how chippy these two teams have gone back and forth. Yeah, you're right, Brian. I mean, it's just been, I don't know, it, low, low fast pace. You know, not not a great shooting night by any either team, and I think Portland's done a better job in this second half. But just some frustration on both sides, and just very physical. You're fine. Thank you. So 4:41 left to go in the fourth quarter. And if you're Weber State, what can you do to try to shrink this lead down with under half a quarter to go? Well, you got to get stops. Number one, you got to stop Portland from scoring. You gotta score a little bit quick in the, and there's one way to do it, is cause turnovers. Torbert to Taylor, and missing the layup, Ball and it'll stay with Weber State, State though. Substitution for Weber State. I mean, if you wanna get back in the game, you can't miss an opportunity like that. That's gotta be an automatic two. Replacing Laura Taylor and Emery Lovell. Weber State only 12 made shots on the day. 0 for seven from behind the arc. Matthews, the floater over Cochran. And I think she's been the most solid player out on the floor for Weaver tonight. Yeah, when we were talking to Coach Harris, she talked about Matthews just being a, the game changer for a program, yep. and you've seen it tonight. I mean, she's got 16 points, nine rebounds. Bauer just hasn't seemed like herself tonight. She hasn't, you're absolutely right. Missed some things early, has been in and out. A little bit of foul trouble here and there. Molheim takes the rebound away from Matthews. Cochran with it. Out to Burnham. Corner to Lindsay. Cochran near the elbow and a travel call. Ball goes over to Weaver State. 
Well, and Cochran right now is having a hard time from the high post of getting by Torbert because Torbert's so strong. Cochran has a new career high in points, nine points. Her previous high was eight against UC San Diego that she set on Thursday. Well, and I think this is just the beginning for her. I mean, mm -hmm. just getting used to the system. They got calling for the ball, taking it all the way, and that's a block for, for Lucy Cochran and a new career high, four blocks. And they feed it to her on one end, finishes it on the other end, and now she's got a double-double. Well, see, and I like that. I like it when she just has to catch and go straight up with it instead of having to make a move. Completely different player. She's got 11 points, 12 rebounds. And Shearer, another steal. She's been a monster defensively, oh. and Cochran, hard take, and one! The teammates are loving it. And she now has 13 points. Foul called on Torbert, and that'll be Torbert's third personal foul. Well, I gotta tell you, that was a great finish because she had somebody come in to shot block that thing with a lot of strength. And the fact that she got it off and stayed up, that was, that was a great finish. Started with Emmy Shearer once again, though, in yeah. the full court, making things happen. Shearer has five steals. I mean, right now, Portland has 16 steals on the night. Taylor has it, full court pressure put on by the Pilots. They've already forced a couple of 10 second calls. So we'll be with it. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. And the three-pointer falls. That's the first one for the Wildcats tonight. Weaver State, 8.30 second. Yeah, a little late in this one for that, but you know, you like to see that they're still competing and really playing hard. And Shearer has tied her career high in steals, and it's, you could almost say it's her best career stat because it's against a Division I opponent. Her last time she had five steals was against Northwest U in a non-conference matchup last season. So she has done a great job in tonight's contest. Yeah, and especially for someone that, you know, has been out with an injury, you know, just trying to get your body back and get used to game speed. Um, great job. I thought she's come in, especially late in the second half, making things happen, getting her hands on balls and anticipating. Two twenty-two left to go in the game. Shearer had eight points in the first half. Four points, a couple assists, a rebound, and three steals. Emily Sewell in the game, and the Pilots get it across the timeline. Flug going up against Laura Taylor. Left hand off the glass. And Flug is in the scoring column. Well, she's going to come in and give some minutes in multiple areas. And that's one of the, the gifts of having her. She can run the point. She can play the guard off guard spot. Sewell with the steal. Hmm. And again, trying to thread that needle between three defenders is not the smartest pass by the Pilots right there. No, and you got a, you know, you got a nice, comfortable lead with a minute 37 to go. You don't need to make that pass. You just pass it back out and run the clock a little bit and get this thing over with. Pilots just 97 seconds away from opening up the season 2-0. And the defense stagnant, sure, the bunny finish. I don't know how many times we're gonna see that this year. It's just people not ready defensively. I was gonna say, it didn't even seem like Weber State knew the ball was ready to be inbounded. No. 
It's a 23 point lead right now for Portland. Back door. And the finish for Penser. She's got five points on the evening. Nice little high low from Weaver. Pilots have to get it across, and they do just in time with a second to spare. One minute less than one minute. Final minute of play. And off to Shearer. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Shearer's got 14. She's got a career high of 16. She had against St. Mary's last season. And she ties it. 16 points now for Shearer. Hickok will run the court. Six points now. Smart, no foul, just let that go. Wind the clock down. Here are 16 points, two rebounds, three assists, and five steals. And after her performance against UCSD, she has to be thrilled with herself tonight. It's the final 10 seconds on the game clock, five seconds between shot clock and game clock. Shearer picks up her dribble. She has to throw it up. Flug. Iron. And rebound, Weber State. And that will be it. 67-46, the Pilots walk out of the Child Center with a 21-point victory over the Wildcats. And Jen, do you have any final thoughts on what you saw in tonight's contest? A good second half. I thought they put themselves together in a position to win the ball game by getting the ball inside and doing some different things. You know, I think that they're going to learn from it, both teams. Uh, you know, very, very physical game and uh, a good job of just competing and getting through it. Well, the Pilots will be in action November 16th against Stanford. That'll be on the Pac-12 Network at 7 p.m. That was Jennifer Mountain. I'm Brian Slyke. Thank you for...